Honeywell and Merlin have teamed up to integrate Merlin's autonomous flight tech with Honeywell's Anthem Avionics, which hopefully is going to reduce pilot workload on military aircraft, moving toward that single pilot or even uncrewed flight, which, you know, I'm not a huge fan of. But the partnership is going to retrofit existing fixed wing military planes with automation capabilities, helping bridge that gap as the military is grappling with pilot shortages. But by enabling single pilot operations, uh, it should really improve fleet efficiency, which is going to benefit both military and commercial sectors. Uh, so you've got Honeywell's Anthem Suite handling avionics tasks. You've got Merlin's automation, streamlining flight tasks, enhancing mission control. Both are kind of bolstering safety uh, on both ends. I mean, the automation really is just reducing crew, but also overall fleet management. Uh, it's going to help with that. So should be crucial, especially as the need for these pilots uh, and did, trained pilots are going to- Did you just say right. that- reducing crew was crucial i think so i think so wow. yeah yeah i i think no, that like a union hr representative <laughs> first off right. there are windows on these so you can fly in it secondly yeah. i think probably greg's number one here we might be looking at either the crew size or the fact that there's a pilot shortage that's interesting but yeah. my number one is going to be we're looking at retrofitting fixed wing military aircraft with Merlin's autonomous system mm -hmm. to eventually get to uncrewed flight, mm -hmm. which means old systems, new fancy tech being put together. We've covered this sort of thing before, but for me, it means I want to look at how are we going to integrate the new fancy tech with the old systems? I hate to agree with you, but I'm going to have to. It. You've okay. got it. I mean, you're right. Integrating Merlin's autonomous flight tech with that existing Honeywell's avionics, um, all retrofitted in military aircraft. Yeah, it's it's integration. I mean, if I wanted to try to disagree with you just to make Greg happy, I think I would go with talking about the collaboration being important between our companies here. You know, like there, there's collab that has to happen between the Merlin between the military aircraft between Honeywell all yep. this kind of put together but no I'm I'm sticking with integration yeah agreed um so so do we agree on the solution though that's the thing and for so me I, I I am running dangerously close to probably you agreeing with me again because I'm I'm going design and change management implementing comprehensive design and change management that incorporates both Honeywell's and Merlin systems making sure that the control that they have control over every single integration step is key. Um, you've got model-based design you want to bring in here to create detailed digital models of the avionics autonomy integration, allow your teams to visualize and to simulate potential issues in those models before physical implementation. Are we going to agree? We are sort of. Okay. So I want to actually dive into a more specific area of looking at some of this design you're talking about, which for me here is the simulation capabilities that we have within modern software. With our current technologies, we can simulate a whole lot of what's going to happen to foresee problems that could happen. So mm -hmm. we're able to see, you know, simulate, look at how you're, where are you going to put the pieces and the that are driving the autonomous operation? Where in the plane do you put these? How do you put them in a way that doesn't, interfere with any humans that will be on there, even though they may not be needed because it's an uncrewed flight, you still might right. have needs for them to be on for other reasons. So they have to be able to fit and to work around the systems. So we can actually use ergonomics inside of simulation to see how humans can function inside of here. So for me, for a lot of this, I think the simulation portion is going to be mm. the, the best part of the solution we can use. So if you're going to go simulate, so I'm at design and change, and you're at product validation and simulation. If you're in simulation, so that, you know, a lot of the software vendors out there are going to say, yeah, we've got AI simulation tools based upon semantic ML-driven models. I think what's going to be interesting now on simulation is the whole generative AI piece of it. So literally, your simulation tools self-learn and improve. I think if you're going to bring simulation in, you want the generative AI simulation, not the traditional algorithm, machine learning, semantic-based, role-based stuff that's out there today. So modernize it. So again, I guess we agree on the back end.